Kira Koto, Kaur Shappi, Ian Shapka Takunoa. Um, as Joanna pointed out, I work with the iwi uh, in Titao Ihu on the top of the south at the present moment, have a relationship with the nine iwi of, the, of Te Waipanami, the South Island. And I'm a paver in the waka, the wata, the waka of hope. I'm a, I'm a Kotiaki Tonga advisor to my employers. So just quickly, Kotiaki Tonga, uh, traditional Māori cultural responsibility. The Kaitiaki carry an intergenerational cultural responsibility under the Tikanga Māori, under the Māori uh, L-O-R-E, the, the, the way of things, the right way, for ensuring that the Māori or essential life principle of the natural world is maintained, thereby exercising Kaitiaki Tonga. I work for a very special team uh, in this context in our work to support the whanau and the hapu with their kotiaki responsibilities and and in the post-settlement world we have many challenges with central local government working with ngos like the climate forum one recent challenge or in the last year or two was looking at the the new zealand biodiversity strategy and in doing that we tried to um, provide a, a human contextual picture uh, in the context of the biodiversity in Aotearoa. So in the overall sense, there's the kotawai, the cloak over the top, and to the left, we're looking at examining exotic biodiversity and to the right, indigenous biodiversity. And we put humans where they belong in the exotic biodiversity, biodiversity regime here. All visitors, including Māori, and because we came into the stasis of the existing biobalance. And so as we look on the left there, we can see uh, we've got our pest species and we've got our species managed for human use. But the common theme there for us is responsibility. And, and that responsibility in our context, in the context I work, is practising kotiaki tanga. So humane sustainable management with the emphasis on the humane for our pest species and the species we manage for, for clothing and food. And over to the right, it's restorative management because of the pale state of the indigenous species. And as we're looking at each of the challenges and tasks we face, we're confronted with the community of interest. And, and so for the responsible implementation of Kotiakitanga, the real community of interest must encompass all living organisms in the place which is the subject of management, be it about managing the status quo or about changing it. But in the broadest sense, the place is planet Earth. I've got some of those, some of the um, impending slides are quite um, visually daunting for, for the text there. Just relax and bear with me and I'll read it with you and you can follow. So examining change daily, we're confronted by people with projects and proposals, uh, which they all suggest are, 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 are musts to have. Um, and, and we're open to looking at them, but we're looking at them simply as change in this way. Prospective change is not about growth, development, progress, or any other inherently flawed and deceptively positive notion. It is simply about a proposal for, ch for change, and it needs to be exhaustively evaluated and progressed in that context, with precaution consciously applied to decision making where there is inadequate information <laughs> slash doubt. There's no rocket science here. Uh, it's about doing things within the uh, scope of our knowledge and information and in the context of our host and acting responsibly. And so to the, to the central theme about unfettered change. So, so we're talking overshoot here, and, and this is just simple platform material. I've got the attributions up there under my headings. If anybody wants to follow them up, I don't have enough time to go in and examine the basement in that context. So, so to overshoot means to go too far to grow so large so quickly that limits are exceeded. And I'll talk about this in a second, but that was for planet Earth, that was around 1980. When an overshoot occurs, it induces stresses that begin to slow and stop growth. The three causes of an overshoot are always the same in any scale from personal to planetary. First, there is growth acceleration, rapid change. Second, there is some form of limit or barrier beyond which the moving system may not safely go. And very pertinently, third, there is a delay or mistake 
in the perceptions and responses that try to keep the system within its limits. The delay can arise from inattention, faulty data, a false theory about how the system responds, deliberate efforts to mislead. I can see those, I'm in, in Aussie at the present moment, and I've got Scott Morrison heading off for the climate forum. Uh, that prompts me. Uh, or, mom or momentum that prevents the system from being stopped quickly. Climate change as a symptom of human overshoot. Our core ecological problem is not climate change. It is overshoot of which global warming is a symptom. And that's the heading of, of, of this presentation. Um, overshoot is a systemic issue. Over the past century and a half, enormous amounts of cheap energy from fossil fuels enabled the rapid growth of resource extraction, manufacturing and consumption. And these in turn led to population increase, pollution and loss of natural habitat and hence biodiversity. The, the human system expanded dramatically overshooting Earth's long-term carrying capacity for humans while upsetting the ecological systems we depend on for our survival. Until we understand and address this systemic imbalance, Symptomatic treatment, in other words, doing what we can to reverse pollution dilemmas like climate change, like, like the Glasgow thing, trying to save threatened species by struggling NGOs and the like, and hoping to feed a burgeoning population with genetically modified crops, will constitute an endlessly frustrating round of stopgap measures that are, that are ultimately destined to fail. And so carrying capacity which I'll enter on into the next slide, but central in, 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 a, in a basic concept for our work in a daily uh, sense, carrying capacity is a well-known ecological term that has an obvious and fairly intuitive meaning. Carrying capacity is the maximum population size of a species that the environment can sustain indefinitely given the food, habitat, water, and other necessities available in the environment. And I stole this uh, wee graph from Canada uh, but it's a, it's a very telling wee piece um, and the axes of consumption versus time and, and the carrying capacity dotted line through the centre. Uh, and if we loosely parallel that with, with the limit to growth, you can see as we overshoot and the, 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 ca the carrying capacity is compromised. So it's a double negative whammy. And it's probably the simplest explanatory tool I've picked up in the genre. So carrying capacity, arguably limits to growth exceeded in 80. Carrying capacity is degrading as we are overpopulating and hyperbehaving. Um, and it's uh, not, a, not a particularly good recipe. Here's the daunting slide one. <laughs> and so going back to my Māori world um, and, and using the contemporary kaitiakitanga idiom, because what we've looked at is the traditional kaitiakitanga, which occurred in a largely balanced world with people who understood that the human species was one of the species coexisting. Uh, we've had to bring that forward and say, those precepts are abiding and, 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 and inextricable, but how we look at our current challenge uh, is not like those subtleties. So we've packaged our contemporary kaitiakitanga in this way. It's under the kotawai of the Māori world. And in looking back at the whakapapa, at the ancestry, we're acknowledging and respecting the deities of the natural world, our ancestors, the ancestors of us all. Um, tikanga based on, the, based on the customary system of values and practices that have been developed by Māori. All whakaro, all ideas tested against the Māori cultural knowledge and implemented through kaitiakitanga, which is the thread through this presentation through responsible stewardship, focused on Māori, life force, vital essence. And all, and this is where, this is the, the pad that I'm going to land on, all mahi to result in net, enduring, restorative outcomes, elevating and strengthening the Māori, the life force, all work to result in restoring the health of the natural world. Mana before money, authority and status come before money, Ecology before economy, the natural world takes precedence over the economy. And in our view, the economy has been elevated to atua status when in fact it's, it's an artifice for the management of goods and services, which should serve positive outcomes for the planet, including the people. Acknowledging our global context, because everything we do pretty well has a global context. 
That's our place and impact in the world at large, resulting in a healthy planet, a healthy people. Kia Māori, iwe haora, au haora. And with our aspirant destination is a healthy, balanced, natural world, which includes the human species, people with a quality, sustainable lifetime, lifetime, <laughs> let's say we have a lifetime, lifestyle, which is underpinned by socio-cultural equity and justice. You can see I've got KT Feb 2021 because it's our team, the team that I work for is Katiaki Otatayo, and we're constantly reviewing our own work and we're constantly reviewing our situation and updating the means by which we can communicate our mahi, our work. And so here we go with our net enduring restorative outcomes. I'll just move my people out of the way again. I hope that didn't hurt. Um, so it's a contemporary kaitiaki tonga tool to, to confront overshoot. So net enduring restorative outcomes, nice acronym <laughs> defined. Uh, so the Kotiaki Tanga management team understands and is advised from the current findings of Mataranga Māori, which is Māori wisdom and knowledge, and Western science, that the natural world, which includes the socio-cultural world of the human species, is being progressively degraded by unwise human activity and behaviour. Climate change impacts are an overt expression, symptom of this continuing process, symptom, mind you, as is the widening gap in wealth equity between haves and have-nots in Aotearoa and New Zealand. This situation which adversely confronts the exercise of kaitiakitanga, the role the management team, the role of the management team in supporting the cultural responsibilities of hapu and Fano, has arisen from a consequence, as a consequence of a long sequence of human decisions and actions that have enabled collective unsustainable change. We have reached a point, overshoot, at which it is clear that human survival is at stake, but also noting morally, responsibly, that this outcome has meant the extinction of many other species. And my coup de grace slide, to halt and attempt to reverse this unacceptable outcome, all decisions, actions that deliver change must improve our current situation, be restorative. The, change, the changes must also endure, so we've got in, restorative changes enduring, if they are to be meaningfully contributory. Change is mostly multifactorial in its implications. So for the aggregated elements of any particular change, for example, housing development, the net outcome of those collective elements of change must be positive, restorative. Accordingly, the management team in undertaking its day-to-day -day mahi, its day-to-day -day work, in evaluating and respond responding responsibly to proposals for change and their related implications for Tataio, our host world, is seeking that resulting changes, change delivers net enduring restorative outcomes, elevating, strengthening Māori. And so that's the bottom line we have as we confront each day professionally in the realm of Kotiakitanga. We have to confront applications for resource consent, aspirations in the community for X and Y, um, people with projects, science um, providers coming to us to work in conjunction, and we give them the wee slide and say, we're buddies if you can paddle a walker in this direction. 